Well, welcome to the EFX Sports Radio Show. My name is Dr. Jeff Colini, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Brian Andrews. Brian, how are we doing today? Oh, man, and now great. broadcasting from the EFX awesome Sports bus. Studio, it's ESPN today. EFX we Sports do. We Radio. We got my friend, uh, Mr. Jeff Mike Allhouse, uh from the IFL, which is the uh, Indoor Football League that uh, we, boy, I think last episode we actually talked with uh, Coach Dixon. And then we also talk with uh, Mr. Mark Burr. So we, we got a good introduction into the IFL. Uh, Mike, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me on. Uh, Mike uh, is the uh, commissioner, so you're, you're, the, you're the big guy there, huh? <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. Yeah, I'm the uh, commissioner of our league here, the Indoor Football League. Uh, I'm an elected official who is kind of trusted through our board of directors to kind of guide the ship and navigate the waters here for our growing business. Uh, so very honored and very humbled to serve our league in the uh, position of commissioner. That's great. Um, and I was noticing, I mean, you're no stranger to the uh, athletic uh, field. I thought maybe you'd tell our listeners just, I mean, who is Mike? You know, what, what is your sports history? Uh, what, what have you done? Well, first and foremost, I'm a sports fan. Anything from cross-country running to field hockey to soccer to basketball to hockey. Again, I, I love it all. I love watching all sports, love participating in all sports. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a sports nut and enthusiast. Um, but, you know, my background in, in athletics, again, started playing football, basketball at a very young age uh, and really excelled a little bit more in football than basketball. Uh, so went to James Madison University in Harrisburg, Virginia, and played football there for a few years and was blessed to be on a national championship team in 2004. Uh, so, again, just a, a really big sports fan, sports nut, and, and obviously football is a little bit of my forte. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in between all that, you got a master's degree, right? Yes, yes. While attending James Madison University uh, at, at graduation, uh, I was kind of stuck with the decision, as, as most uh, young adults have once they're finishing up their four-year degree, was, man, am I ready to go into the real, real world, or can I stretch out this education thing for a few more years? <laughs> uh, so I decided to uh, go and get a master's degree at Virginia Commonwealth University uh, in Richmond, Virginia, uh, it's just a great experience getting to work with the VCU basketball team there. Well, Shaka Smart was the uh, then head coach. Uh, now he's at the uh, University of Texas, has since moved on. But, uh, you know, just a great experience at VCU uh, and, and just couldn't, uh, couldn't ask for a better learning experience and uh, hands-on experience that they provide us there with our master's program. That's- yeah, hey, Mike, you know, that, that's actually my alma mater, brother. Really? Virginia Virginia Small world, then. Yes, sir. Small yes, sir. World. And I did. I kind of like you. I stuffed uh, four years into four and a half. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, go Rams. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> there you go. Well, again, it was kind of tough for me, you know, during basketball games. When, you know, they're both, or at least they, they used to both be in the CAA. I think uh, VCU has now moved on uh, to the A-10. Uh, but the loyalty was definitely tested there. Uh, but unfortunately for the VCU Ram fans, I still bleed purple and gold JMU. Uh, football and basketball, so they they get my preference. But still, whenever they're not playing JMU, I, I root on the uh, the Rams there. Nice. Right, we'll let that go for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm from I'm from Cleveland, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. You know. Um, so, um, uh, Mike, let's talk about the IFL. Um, you know, what is the IFL? Uh, you know, what makes it different from maybe other indoor football re- uh, leagues? Uh, NFL. I mean. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Obviously, the community and fans there of, of Billings, Montana, uh, have a pretty good taste and pretty good understanding of, of what we're all about here and about indoor football. Um, having you know the previous team, the Billings Outlaws, which uh, was a great team, uh, won multiple championships in our league, unfortunately went away for a few years because of the devastating tornado up there. Uh, but now the new incarnation of indoor football, the Billings Wolves, and the great success that they've had in their first season uh, and just really trending upwards for them out there and, and looking for a bright future for 2016 for the Wolves. Um, so you guys have had a pretty good taste of it and, and a lot of success there uh, in our industry. But a little bit of background about the IFL. Uh, we were formed in 2008 out of a merger between um, United Indoor Football and in the Intense Football League, which were two leagues that were based primarily in the Midwest and Texas. Uh, so when starting in the 2009 season, they merged to form the Indoor Football League, which is our current league. Um, and we've continued to grow not only in professionalism and quality teams and products that we have and players that we put out on the field, 
uh, but also um, in kind of our experience in in, in our um, main, mainstream game gaining media mainstream of attention. Uh, it's just really we're slowly trending upwards and growing and building this sport to where we think it should be. Um, the sport is eight-on-eight eight football. Uh, we pride ourselves on being as close to traditional outdoor football that you see on NFL Sundays and college football Saturdays brought indoors uh, on a 50-yard long field. And the field is half as wide as well, um, and we play football. Uh, again, we line up. There's a lot of running, a lot of passing, a lot of defensive stands. Uh, field goal kicking, you name it, we have it. Uh, so if you are a traditional football fan, uh, you are going to definitely enjoy our product and what we provide, um, especially during those spring and summer months when everybody misses, sorely misses college football and NFL football is on the weekend. Well, we're that kind of stopgap and that niche. We fill that role very well uh, for the spring and, and summertime months for those NFL and football fans out there. So, so Mike, how, how did you actually get involved with the IFL? You know, when we were talking about kind of my education background a little bit, uh, while I was in VCU, uh, I was I participated in an internship uh, with the IFL league office, actually. It just so happened that our league office was located uh, in Richmond, Virginia at the time. Um, I was looking for an internship, so I volunteered my time to start off with. Shortly after graduating um, from VCU, uh, I was hired on as the director of communications for the league. I uh, was in that role for a year or so, um, then was promoted to director of football operations, uh, which being a football guy, again, that's uh, that was kind of my passion, reason for wanting to get into sports uh, originally, dealing with contracts, dealing with players, dealing with coaches, rules on and off the field. Uh, that's really uh, my passion uh, in this position in, in the IFL. Um, so spent a couple of years as director of football operations, then was promoted to assistant commissioner a few years after that. And then as of two years ago, uh, I you know, was named commissioner of the Indoor Football League uh, for the past few years. So as our company has slowly grown, I've grown within our company as well and kind of ascended the ranks. Uh, it's something that I'm certainly very proud of, the progress that not only I've made personally but professionally uh, within the company, but also the progress that our company as a whole has made as a league. It's really exciting stuff, and, and I really see a bright future for our league uh, for years to come. And I think a lot of people, sometimes when you look at sports, you forget that this is a business also. Um, you know, and as being the commissioner, you just aren't sitting up in the press box uh, enjoying the games. Um, there's some work. It's a little bit of stress. Uh, what kind of challenges, I mean, does being a commissioner of this uh, this great league uh, present to you? You know, it, it is definitely a very difficult business. It's a, it's a business that, uh, you know, is very rewarding at the end of the day. Um, when you when you work in the professional sports industry, it's it's very rewarding to put on events to to help people uh, reach their goals, to help employees reach their goals, whether they're promoting players to the upper levels of out, of outdoor football, coaches, referees, you name it. It's very rewarding, but also there's a lot of time, a lot of hours, uh, a lot of stressful weekends as well, putting on events and and making sure that everything goes just right. And uh, uh, obviously, some of the bigger challenges that I face as the league commissioner are more on the league level and obviously on the, the singular uh, team level. Uh, but really just upholding the integrity of the IFL, uh, making sure that all of our teams, players, coaches are, are abiding by our rules and regulations, uh, seeking out opportunities to improve our league and grow our league uh, so that we can be more successful down the line. Uh, spotting industry trends is something that I pride myself on doing as well and, and making sure that we're, uh, we're targeting certain areas that we should be in and, and staying up on on maybe what some of our competitors are doing or what the entire football industry is uh, heading towards. Um, so, again, a lot of challenges. It's a lot of fun, uh, but also pretty stressful at some times. But, again, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a business that I have a passion for and I'm very excited for um, and, and really am blessed to be in. You know, and I, I to be honest, I had never been to uh, in an arena of football, an indoor game. I mean, I played uh, outside ball. And so I got my first uh, exposure uh, this past uh, spring or winter with the uh, the Wolves. And I got to tell you, um, I would rather watch an IFL game than sit and watch an NFL game on TV. I mean, it is exciting. Yeah, I yeah that's what we pride ourselves on. Uh, obviously, we, we, you know, on the product on the field as far as the, the players and the quality of the players is at is very near NFL level. A lot of these guys are big-time Division One. Uh, football players that, you know, all the way from University of Alabama, University of Texas, you know, Auburn, LSU, 
all the great uh, schools and universities across this land, uh, their, their players are up and down, filtered up and down our rosters. Uh, and ISL teams, for whatever reason, they were once a tad too slow in their 40 time or they didn't bench press enough or they're a couple inches too short or a few pounds too light uh, that they missed out on the draft or were drafted and didn't make the you know training camp roster or whatever the case may be. Uh, we're giving these gentlemen, young men, a, a second chance, basically, to get more film, to participate in the sport they love in hopes that they can make it to the NFL or the CFL in the next few years after participating in our league. Yeah, hey, Mike, we're coming up against a hard break here, and um, I want to go back to something or come back to when we come back from break. You mentioned, I think, the, the league started, what, 2008? Yes. Is that correct? Okay, well, yes. let's pick up with where you see it going and what, what do you have envisioned for, say, the 2016 season once we get back from break? Hey everybody, I'm Billy Gordon. I'm one of the coaches for the Heights Wrestling Club. I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about EFX Sports and what their products have done for me and my wrestlers and the athletes that I lead. Six months ago, I got introduced to EFX Sports and I immediately started using them myself. The results have been nothing short of amazing. My body fat and weight have come down drastically. My strength has increased. If you get the opportunity, I highly recommend you give it a shot this is dr jeff galini of all american pharmaceutical i'm sure you've been seeing our national brand efx sports featuring carbolin and crealcolin all around the state lately our supplements are formulated for pros to high schoolers to just the average gym goer and are all about improving your game you can find efx sports and billings at yellowstone fitness lucky's bonanza's health food granite fitness and gnc just to mention a few do you know how to properly use carbohydrates to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athletic world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free. Once again, it's G-E-T-K-A-R-B-O-L-Y-N dot com forward slash C-A-R-B-G-U-I-D-E. Well, welcome back to EFX uh, Sports Radio. Uh, we're talking here with uh, Mr. Mike Allshouse. Uh, he was the IFL commissioner. And uh, we want to talk a little bit about, you know, 2016. Um, you know, what's, what's new? What can we expect? I've heard there's some, uh, a few new rule changes. Um, so why don't we talk about that, Mike? You know, it's a very exciting time for our league. Uh, you know, again, as I said, we're growing. Uh, we're growing not only in our quality, but we're also growing in our qual- quantity of numbers as far as teams that we have. Last year, we participated as a 10-team league during the 2015 season. I'm proud to say that all 10 teams are returning for the 2016 season, uh, which, uh, again, in our industry, indoor football industry, is kind of unheard of. Uh, it just really shows, goes to show the, the stability and structure and support uh, that we provide our teams here at the indoor football league level. It's something that I'm very proud of. Um, in addition to all those 10 teams coming, we have two additional new teams uh, that are joining uh, the mix and will be competing for our United Bowl Championship uh, next summer. Um, one being a team that's pretty close to you guys, uh, a few hours to the west there in the uh, city of Spokane, Washington. It's a team that's transferring over from the Arena Football League, uh, uh, formerly known as the Shock. They'll be rebranding themselves as a different uh, team name here. Uh, pretty soon uh, to be members in our league. But we're very excited about uh, adding a quality ownership group headed by Nader Naini. Uh, their front office is ran by Ryan Eichert, uh, a gentleman with a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, uh, and just a great partner that we're looking forward to having a long and productive relationship with. Uh, secondly, we've added another team, uh, the Minnesota Havoc, brand new expansion team that is located in Mankato, Minnesota. Uh, again, they're headed by Stanley and Tiffany Legg and a lot of experience in the football industry and great business people to be involved with as well. So we're, we're proud about those two new additions, which is 
a great change for the 2016 season, adding those two teams to the mix. As far as rules on the field, uh, we actually have our coaches meeting, uh, IFL coaches meeting, we'll annual Chicago, event that takes we'll place uh, in mid uh, in which we uh, all basically we'll all, meet uh, be and in talk about rule changes for the upcoming year, a couple of officials being involved as well. And I'm sure a lot of the on-the-field nitty-gritty details as far as uh, you know on-the-field changes, those things will be discussed in the coming months. Uh, and, and obviously we'll, we'll make those public as soon as those changes are finalized. Yeah, and part of the reason I asked about you know starting just in 2008, I mean, I know this – this league has grown tremendously. Like, what, what have you seen in terms of growth, you know, obviously from the first year as far as attendance, you know, that type of thing? You know, it's something that, uh, you know, we've, we've continued, you know, each year it seems like we're getting better and better as we adapt and remold kind of our, our philosophies and, and our business practices to make it, you know, the best industry that we can here at the ISL. Uh, this past season, I'm proud to say we've set box office records uh, for the Indoor Football League league-wide. We averaged over 4,100 fans per game. Uh, and the average arena size is about 6,000 fans uh, in the IFL. So, again, we're, we're filling up the stands pretty well. There's still a lot of room for improvement, uh, but I'm proud to say that we set not only single-game records but also season-wide, league-wide average uh, this year, 2015. And we're looking forward to improving upon that uh, for next year as well. Uh, we also set a record uh, for our online streaming of IFL games. Uh, you know, we have an online live streaming uh, brought to you uh, our fans by Eversport.tv um, is our partner in that. Uh, we had a record number of uh, clicks and views uh, for our games online as well. So, again, the popularity is definitely growing. Uh, you know, the, the interest is definitely there for the Indoor Football League, um, and, and our teams are really starting to really thrive in their select markets across the, the USA. And we're definitely uh, very proud and and definitely very eager uh, to really capitalize on some of that interest and, and really grow our product going forward. A question for you. For some of the football athletes who are listening, if a guy wanted to get into the IFL, what would he have to do? You know, each of our teams, uh, 12 teams, do their own individual recruiting, uh, signing of players, uh, things of that nature. Um, there's tryouts that are happening all during the off season. We've had a couple of tryouts already happen for a few teams. There's a lot of tryouts coming up for our teams. Uh, so their best bet is to uh, stay track of those tryout dates and locations. We keep all that information on the league's official website, uh, www.goifl.com. Uh, also, if there's a specific team that they're interested in playing for or perhaps it's the hometown team they're interested in, uh, contact those teams directly uh, and look at their tryout information uh, because, again, they're out there. Every team usually participates in two or three tryouts during the off season. We're always looking for great talent out there. Uh, and, again, it's, you know, it's, we, we want to see you. We want you to come out. We want you to participate. And, and who knows what, what kind of talent is out there that's really interested in playing in the IFL, and that's why these uh, tryouts are available. To so there so you do, go. Do, do you guys have any kind of like a draft pick or anything similar to that? No, there's, there's not really a draft pro, uh, process or – or expansion process, uh, draft process, or anything like that. It's something that we, you know, can, have continued to monitor. As far as you know, the thought of has been that you know what we jot around is possibly doing a regional combine, uh, you know, like an NFL combine sort of thing uh, in one location. Uh, but nothing is imminent um, in that regard. It's something that we're we're looking at, and, and it, obviously, if it makes sense, uh, we'll continue to pursue it. But at this time, really, all the signing. Uh, the the releasing of players and recruiting of players, all of that, all of that is currently left up to the individual teams and their front office staff. So, if you're uh, listening today and you're really good, you want to come to the uh, Billings Wolves tryouts. <laughs> there you go. There you go. A little partial, you know. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, if, if you play football, I know a lot of times, uh, you know whether you're high school or college, you know, most of us always wanted to play professional football. This is professional football. You know, this gives you a, another chance to continue your career and get paid for it. And as you said, Mike, uh, I know a lot of guys uh, get a second look at the NFL. Um, wasn't about five or six guys last year got moved up or something like that? Yeah, you know, it's something that, again, we're very proud of as a league, giving those uh, young gentlemen a second chance at, at making a CFL or an NFL roster. Uh, we're averaging anywhere from 12 to 15 players a year wow. uh, in our existence that have signed either CFL or NFL contracts uh, after playing in our league. Um, I think we had about 10 or 12 this past season that did that. Uh, so, again, it's, it's, it's definitely 
you know, when, when, when the scouts from the CFO and the NFL talk to our teams, talk to us here at the league office staff, they never cease to compliment us on our game because of the rule system is so similar to outdoor football compared to other, uh, you know, in you know, other leagues in our industry that play more of a, uh, you know, a different style where you throw the ball every down. In our league, it's very traditional football. If you love running, if you love passing, if you love defense stands, goal line stands, again, what football is basically about, that's what we are. Uh, so the scouts really love our product because they, they get a better chance to evaluate the players that are in our league when they're watching the game film. So uh, it's something that, that we're very proud of, and it's one of our core goals of the league is to pro- promote these players uh, to those upper levels of outdoor football. And, Brian, when you were out here, did you, didn't you notice how um, fan-based these athletes are compared to sometimes other pro athletes? I mean, how the, the whole thing was really about the fan Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, again, the the number one thing you notice when you watch this compared to, you know, the NFL or anything like that is it's it's scaled down because, you know, the size of the field and that type of thing. But it's just so fast paced. It's not all that constant stop start you're so used to when you when you watch a game on TV. And that's what I think people really, really get into is it just keeps moving. And, 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 you know, the scores are much higher overall, you know, with the amount of touchdowns. And you're right. The people can just really get into it, man. They, they, they go nuts. Yeah, you're closer to the game. And then even like here, I don't I'm sure it's the same way in other teams. But, you know, after the game, the players could come out or the uh, fans could come out in the field. They could shake the hands of the, the players on both teams, get pictures. And I thought that was really cool because, you know, these young kids, they look up to these players. We don't have a professional team uh, in Montana. So, our wolves are what our kids look up to. So I, I have to commend you on that, Mike. I think that's probably coming from you guys um, to the league, uh, making sure that they remember the fans are who are paying their salaries. Well, hey, Mike, you know, hats off to you. You guys are doing a fantastic job. I mean, this thing is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, like I said, we, we sure enjoyed working with, with the uh, local team there in Billings. It, it, it's, it's, this is something people really need to check out. Again, go to um, your website. I think you said it was www.goifl.com. If you want to learn more about the IFL, and on that note, again, I just in closing, I want to say, go Rams. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, thank you guys so much for having me on again. It, it was uh, very enjoyable, and hopefully, uh, we'll be able to do it again here in the near future. All right, thanks, Mike. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to ESPN EFX Sports Radio. Be sure to check out EFX Sports online at aaefx.com. And don't forget to check out EFX Sports Supplements everywhere fitness products are sold.